Praxis Prepper. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and today we're talking about the day three episode of Praxis Prepper Alien Invasion. We're going to talk about some of the prepping topics that were brought up in that episode, and at the very end I'm going to share with you a sneak peek about what's going on in the series next week. But before any of that, if you haven't seen the day three episode, there's a link up above, you can click on it and you can find out what we're talking about. Wait a moment. Okay, man, we're back. Before we get into the topic, though, I wanted to thank a few people uh, who have helped uh, contribute to the series through Patreon. Now, if you're not familiar, the only reason that this series is even happening is from the financial support of uh, people who have gone to Patreon and have pledged one, five, ten, twenty-five dollars even to help start this, the Alien Invasion series and to keep it going. At the moment, we're at a level where I can just about keep up with one new Alien Invasion uh, episode per month, which I just think is amazing, that is tremendous, that uh, you guys have all stepped up and, and made that possible. I think that two episodes a month would be absolutely ideal, because it's kind of hard to wait a whole month between, you know, some of my awesome cliffhangers. Uh, but uh, I'm just, I am just ecstatic that we're even where we are. I think it's a great uh, project that we're all working on together to get something entertaining out to people that can help popularize prepping and make the whole world more safe for all of us if we can get more people to be prepared. So there have been a couple people who have uh, contributed on Patreon in the, in the past uh, couple weeks, and I want to thank you guys. First, uh, Tobias Zweckerl. I'm sorry if I'm messing up your last name, Tobias, but thank you very much. Also, Coleste Enoch, or Enoch, I'm not sure about your last name either, Coleste, but thank you so much. Uh, Jeff, thank you not only for your financial support, but for just having the simple name Jeff. I can totally manage the word Jeff, uh, the name Jeff. Thank you very much. Uh, Brandon Braxton, uh, mahalo. Uh, uh, Gordon Kukulu or Kuksulu. I'm not sure about the, the soft or the hard C nature of any of the C's in your last name, but thank you very much, Gordon. This series would not be happening without you guys. Um, I, I wanted to mention that uh, I am working on getting a PayPal uh, link up so that if you're not interested in, in doing the Patreon thing, I know some people are starting into Patreon, I am working on getting that up, but I just, yeah, I've been putting in a lot of hours on the, on the series itself, uh, but I will get that up. That's not something I'm neglecting. I'm just working on this series, which has been awesome, and I feel so privileged that I have the chance to make this for you guys, because I've been having so much fun, I know so many people have been enjoying it, and again, I really hope it starts to uh, popularize the idea of prepping, just to make our whole society stronger, more ruggedized, uh, which is better for all of us, really, for reasons that we're going to talk about right uh, in, in this uh, discussion uh, topic uh, video, because that's one of the big topics of the video, is people being unprepared around you. Uh, in the video, uh, just after the second day or so of the power going out, uh, my character's neighbor comes over and he has run out of water. Uh, and that is, I think, probably the biggest concern for most people in a disaster. Now, I've said on a number of occasions that this alien invasion series is not trying to teach you how to survive an invasion. You know, even if the aliens were airdrop bird flu infected clown zombies. I don't see it as being that likely, <laughs> at least as compared to some other, uh, you know, potential disaster sort of scenarios. The kind of things you happen, uh, you hear happening on a weekly basis, like hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, fires, you know, even economic uh, collapses and things of that nature. Those are the kind of things that are happening, and that's what the lessons in these uh, episodes are, are meant to, you know, to talk about, to give people skills for the, you know, real life events, not necessarily the bird flu infected clown zombies. Uh, and water, I think, is really top on, on everyone's list because it's not the kind of thing that you can wait like a week or so to get a drink of water if you need one. Uh, in the episode, I shared with my neighbor how to make a primitive water filter. Uh, and here's a, a, put a link somewhere. I don't know where the links go. They're somewhere up at the top up there. Um, or maybe they're off to the left or the right. I don't know. But uh, here's a link somewhere for um, uh, that video that I, I mentioned in, in the uh, day three video about how to make your own primitive water filter. The, uh, in that video, I go through, you know, how to just take crap on the ground and turn it into an, a pretty effective water filter. And if you combine it with boiling, you know, to get rid of any biological contaminants, you get some pretty darn clean water, uh, or at least way, way, way cleaner than, you know, wherever you were grabbing it from in the first place. Um, but I think that's a, a, a huge topic. Do you have what, what are your plans for that? I mean, are you planning on, uh, you know, making your own water filtration? Are you going to be drinking out of lakes and streams? Uh, have you bought a lot of store-bought filters? What are your thoughts about how long those filters are going to last? Uh, one of the things that I mentioned in the making your own primitive filter uh, video is that if you make a primitive filter, you can pre-filter a lot of water that you're going to put into your commercial filters, uh, which will just make those filters last so much longer. So if you wanted to pre-filter water through a primitive filter, don't even bother boiling it and then just run it that water right through you know, a Berkey filter or something like that, it's going to make your Berkey filters, uh, you know, the expensive ones that, you know, you had to pay for and that 
in a disaster situation may not even be available anymore is going to make those filters last so much longer. But what is your approach to all of that? Do you, is this something you've given a lot of consideration to? Because being without water is, I mean, it's deadly, uh, you know, if you're out without water for an extended period of time, but even it can just be a big pain in the ass too, <laughs> to, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, to have to be working on, you know, little bottles and really rationing to be able to get yourself a good supply of water in an emergency can make everything just a lot more comfortable and make everything better from, you know, you know, not dying to just having, you know, better hygiene, which is going to keep, you know, skin irritation and things like that to a minimum. Um, so that was the, the, one of the topics in the episode, but I think the bigger topic, and I don't know if it's more important, but it is a bigger problem for, I think, uh, more of the prepping community, uh, is the the issue of how much we are sharing our interest in prepping, our enthusiasm for, for prepping with people around us and developing kind of a network. Uh, I, this is one of my problems as well. Uh, you know, I should just put that out there. I, I'm not like, you know, chastising other people for, you know, having this issue and it's not one that I have as well. This is one that I have as well. I'm familiar with people that are into prepping in different places, but I don't really actually know anyone in my, my immediate area that is really into prepping. I'm sure there are people, but I haven't net networked with them, and I, I find it difficult to, uh, to figure out who those people are. Uh, and I, I think there's a few legitimate reasons why people are tight-lipped about it. Uh, I think uh, one of them is the idea of kind of security. You know, there's the, uh, the fear that like if people know you're into prepping, you know, someone's going to show up at your door with a gun and say, you know, like, you know, give me all, your, <laughs> give me all your food or or whatever, and. And you don't want to make yourself a target like that. So you, it makes you feel like you want to be a little bit more quiet about it. Uh, and even if they don't have a gun, if all the people in your neighborhood know that you're the, the person to come to if you need food or water or anything in an emergency, you may have stacked, you know, two, three, four, five, six months, a year worth of food in your house, but that's not going to last very long if you got a, a line a thousand people deep, you know, out, you know, up to your doorstep, you know, on the second day of of an event, and it's really hard to turn people away. Uh, it's it's not in our nature to want to turn our backs on people, and but at the same time, you know, you have to worry about your family. So I, I think that that's another reason that people just don't share it is they don't want to be targeted in either of those ways. Um, but in addition to that, I think there's a whole other layer to it, and it, it doesn't really have to do with any of those specific things. But it's just the idea that prepping is it's still kind of weird. It's still kind of a fringe thing. Now, I know that's not the case everywhere. There's plenty of places where there's an enclave and it's like, that's just the way people live. People are prepared for things because it makes sense. Um, but that's not the way that I think, that's not the way that most people's communities are. I think in most communities, prepping's still kind of fringe. It's kind of weird. And one of the reasons I do this channel, one of the reasons I'm doing this alien invasion series is try to like kind of popularize some of these things so that your neighbors are less desperate. You know, if more of your neighbors were into prepping, you wouldn't have to worry about that stuff as much. Um, you wouldn't have to worry about any of those things if everyone was into prepping. You know, they wouldn't be lining up at your door and they wouldn't think it was weird to, that you were into prepping because they're into it too. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that I do the channel and everything is I think it's just good for our society to have more people that are into being prepared for things. Um, but at the moment, that's not the case. Uh, and people are social animals. They want to fit in with their community and, and their neighborhood. They don't want to be seen as this like weirdo who like, you know, sits in their bunker, you know, eating bullets and, you know, storing beans, or the other way around. I'm, I'm not sure which way that one goes. But, um... I think that's a real issue. And even though it's not like a very specific threat, it's like people just don't like to be seen as being like oddball weirdos. So I think that's another reason that people kind of uh, hold that, uh, hold it close to their chest when they're into prepping, but it's really to all of our detriment if we do so, because people are always stronger in a group. Uh, and the whole idea of just being a lone wolf is just anti-human. Humans are social creatures. That's the way that we have evolved. That's how we excel and how, it's how we succeed. And pretty much every job you need to do in, well, not, I can't say every job, but the, so many jobs that you would be having to do in a collapsed environment are gonna be so much easier if you have a prepping group that you are collaborating with. I, I mean, just think of an example, if you've ever helped someone move, how much easier is it to move a sofa with two people versus one? 
with two people, it's no, no big thing at all. You can even go up a flight of stairs or whatever. But with one person, it's a huge hassle. It's a huge problem that requires a lot of ingenuity to get around pulleys and straps and, and everything. And if you just have an extra person, all of that kind of craziness goes away. And, and that is the case for so many things. And so it is really to our detriment that if we are not having a solid group of people that we can fall back upon in our community. Now, a lot of people, you know, kind of have their, the idea that, you know, their family would get on board if there was ever like an emergency. But I, I think that that is kind of waiting to the last minute to, to do a lot of things that would really be uh, much better served, you know, done ahead of time. So anyway, what is your thinking on that? Do you think that that's a, a critical thing as I seem to, or uh, do you think that's, you know, lone wolf would work just fine? Don't worry about it. Uh, if you do approach people, what's your technique for approaching people? How do you find people that you think would be kind of receptive and aren't going to be, you know, putting you on their list of people to, you know, show up at their house with a gun uh, if, you know, the, the shit ever hits the fan? Like, how do, how do you uh, approach that? So I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm sure other people would love to hear your thoughts below in the comments. I know the comments are always below, right? I think the comments are always below. So without any further uh, blabbing on that, thank you very much for uh, watching this episode. And here's a little clip of what's happening next week on Alien Invasion. There it is right there. I don't know. I think I, one of the things that's most frustrating about this whole thing is I just don't know what's going on. Again, I'm just, I'm presuming that, uh, that they're hostile. I don't know. I mean, maybe the explosion was people and, you know, the aliens are going to cut us some slack and they're, that they're going to some, you know, diplomatic meeting at Devil's Tower, Wyoming. Except Devil's Tower is to the west of here, I guess, so it wouldn't be that. I know that for certain, unless they're taking a circuitous route. I don't know, but uh, I, maybe I shouldn't be out in the open here. I don't know. Am I whispering too? <laughs> so they can hear me? Yeah, don't talk too loud. They'll hear you. I don't know. Or maybe they can. I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know anything. Uh, I got the, the batteries charging for the radio. So uh, maybe I'll find something out. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, something's happening. Something's happening. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.